Hi folks, my name is Ron Bishop and I'm reading to you from my success manual called How to Think Like a Winner. Think Talk Lesson Number 4 Letting Go of Your Feelings and Emotions Welcome to Lesson 4 of Think Talk, your own personal self-development course that teaches you how to think. Most of the people who email me with questions are women, and I wondered why. If you think about it, women are making a huge impact on the corporate and business world, and there are now more women leaders than ever before. The reason women are excelling is because they seem to be more open to learning and applying the sort of information that's provided in Think Talk and other similar courses. Men, on the other hand, are stubborn like I used to be. I once had a closed mind and thought I knew it all until the penny dropped and I decided to change. Come on, you men, get rid of that pride and ego. Don't let the woman beat you. Open up and read the stuff. It really does work. Last lesson. In our last lesson, we talked about the pendulum of life and I explained to you that to be successful in anything you do, you must have the right attitude. Your attitude is a direct reflection of your thoughts. In answer to a reader's question, I also told you to make a list of your mistakes of the past. I then told you to think about them so that they feel so that you feel their pain and they burn and then burn them. Your mistakes of the past should now be gone forever. Life is short, so don't uh, keep bringing up them back. Bring them back. You are just wasting energy by living in the past. You must then replace those hurt feelings with good feelings of your past successes. Keep your success list handy, so whenever you become depressed, you can refer back to your success list, which always makes you feel good. When I write my two lists of all the bad things and good things that happened to me, I was surprised at the result. My list of good things was three times longer than my list of bad things. All the self-pity parties I once held soon melted away into significance. Cravings. In lesson two, we talked about our two worlds, the inner world of our thoughts and the outer world of reality. Our inner world is made up of our emotions and feelings, and, in, and whenever we feel stress in our inner world, we reach out into the outer world for something to calm our nerves. Maybe it's a drink, some food, or a cigarette, but wherever it is, our mind accepts it and, and by repetition turns it into a craving or a habit. In today's lesson, you are going to learn how you can let go of that stressful feeling that causes you to indulge in something that maybe is doing you more harm than good. The Ladder of Success This lesson is all about climbing the ladder of success. To do, to do this is taking control of your feelings and emotions. There are three groups of emotions. Courage, acceptance and peace, lust, anger and pride, and depression, grief and fear. The nine steps up the ladder of success are on the chart. Let's look at the chart. The bottom one is depression. Apathy, stuck, can't and lazy. Next one up is grief, hurt, guilty, loss, and pity. And the third one is fear, doubt, scared, worry, panic. Then we have lust, selfish, greedy, want, and envy. Then there is anger, rude, mad, violent, jealous. Then we move up to pride. Arrogant, aloof, cool, smug. They're all the negative emotions of every human being. 
depression, grief, fear, lust, anger and pride. The three at the top is where we want to be. Peace, acceptance and confidence. Confidence, I can, eager, belief, courage. And we have acceptance, be open, warm, joyful and secure. And the top of the list we all want to be there is peace. Free, pure, perfect, calm. They're the three positive emotions that we're all looking forward to. And this lesson is going to teach you how you can have those. So how to let go of your feelings and emotions. There are nine different emotions and each one causes us to have a different feeling. The most destructive feelings are at the bottom of the ladder and the most constructive are at the top. Emotions create feelings and like all feelings they must have an outlet. Negative feelings which are displayed by action can cause destruction to oneself and to others. Negative feelings which are held inside of you cause much unhappiness and sickness. All feelings and emotions are caused by your wants. When you display your feelings and emotions, you are either wanting, to, wanting security, acceptance or control. Whenever you get an emotional feeling, you tend to want to hang on to that feeling and you don't want to let it go. The good news is that you can let it go by saying a short affirmation. The main thing to remember is that your feelings are not attached to your body and you can let them go. First look at the above emotions and see what they stand for. Depression. This is the most destructive of all the emotions because it prevents you from taking any positive action. We all become depressed at some stage in our lives and we need to find a way to snap out of it. If we don't and we stay depressed for any length of time, <clears throat> then we are in danger of taking our own life. Saying the affirmation I'm about to give you will quickly bring you out of depression and take you up to the top of the ladder to peace. Grief. Grief is also a destructive emotion because it makes you think about your past mistakes and makes you feel guilty when in turn lead, which in turn leads to self-pity. <clears throat> you feel grief and hurt at the loss of a loved one, but this should only be a temporary emotional feeling. The best and most natural way to release the feeling of grief is to cry, but unfortunately many people hold back their tears, especially men, because they have been taught that big boys don't cry. The letting go affirmation is another form of emotional release for the feeling of grief. Fear. This is an emotional that emotion that holds you back from achieving. It causes worry, doubt and panic. The story is told of a man who accidentally locked himself in a freezer. He feared that he would freeze to death and he did so. What he did not, what he did not know was that the freezer had been turned off for some time and was not cold enough to kill him, but the fear of dying did. This is why I am so opposed to life-threatening labels being put on cigarette packets that sm say smoking kills. Whatever you fear will come in upon you. Live in the fear that smoking causes lung cancer and you'll get it. Lust. This is an emotion that displays a strong desire for something such as sex, money or fame. It also causes greed, envy and selfishness. Lust is not a good emotion it, to hold on to because it can be destructive. The emotion of lust is the biggest cause of marital breakdowns, broken homes and criminal activity because it is an emotion that is always seeking an outlet. Lust must be released and the letting go affirmation can help you do that.
anger. This is another of the dangerous emotions because anger, like the others, is always looking for an outlet. If not kept in control, it has the potential to harm others. Violence, jealousy and rudeness are all symptoms of anger. People say and do things they regret because of the emotion of anger. Many methods such as physically hitting an object have been tried, but unfortunately that object sometimes is another person. Walking away from the situation and changing your thoughts by using the letting go affirmation release it, will release it and make everyone feel better. Pride. This is an emotion that can be both destructive and constructive. It is a good thing to have pride in yourself and, and surroundings, yet bad if it stops you from admitting you are wrong and accepting change. People with too much pride often display an attitude of superiority towards others. Next week we will talk about beliefs. Your beliefs are so strong that they can prevent you from admitting you may be wrong because all we have is a desire to be right. People will kill each other rather than swallow their pride and admit they were wrong. The opposite of pride is humility, where you will admit you are wrong and have the courage to apologise. Courage. We now move into the three top positive emotions. Another word for courage is confidence. It's a feeling of eagerness and belief in oneself. If you have confidence, you can overcome many of the other belief, fears and beliefs. Confidence comes from consistently moving out of your comfort zone. You were born with courage, but it has taken a dent at times as, result, as a result of your experiences where you have been hurt by others and you have, or you are afraid of being hurt again. Acceptance. This is another of the three top positive emotions. It is a feeling of joy making you open and warm towards others. When you feel accepted, you feel safe and secure. When you accept something, you believe it to be true. We all like to feel important, and the emotion of acceptance helps us to achieve that goal. Laughter is an outlet for the emotion of acceptance. The story is told of a man who was told that he had cancer and only a few months to live. His doctor prescribed him an overdose of laughter. He locked himself in a room watching humorous films for several days and eventually laughed himself back to good health. Peace. This emotion is at the top of the list because it is the one emotion we will strive for. Peace is a place where all where you feel free and restful. You feel calm and perfect in every way, fully free of any worries or concerns. The feeling of peace is the number one feeling and emotion that we all strive for. I will. Before I give you releasing affirmations, I want to give you another exercise to do so that you can prove to yourself that the words I will have real power. Often people will say, I can or I'll try, but nothing will stop the person who says, I will. Get a pen, a, a pen exercise. Take a pen and hold it upright between your thumb and forefinger and hold it, your hand out in front of you. Look at the top of the pen and concentrate on looking at the pen while you are saying these words. I can drop it. I can drop it. I can drop it. I can drop it. If you did as I explained, you would not have been able to open your fingers to let the pen drop. Do it again, only this time say these words. I can drop it. I can drop it. I will drop it. I will drop it. As soon as you said I will drop it, your fingers would have parted and the pen would have dropped. I will drop it. I will drop it. I will drop it. What does this exercise prove? Word meanings have a profound effect on how your body reacts. When you were saying, I can drop it, your mind put your body on standby 
and your fingers would not part. When you said, I will drop it, your mind said, OK, it's time for action, and your fingers parted. Point to remember. The next time you say you can do something, or may never, may, it may never happen until you say, I will do it. Your wants. When you get a feeling, accept that you have this feeling. Invite it in and then ask yourself this question. Why am I feeling this way? Is it because I am wanting security, acceptance or control? There is no wrong or right answer to the question. It just helps you to acknowledge that the feeling is there for a reason and you are now ready to deal with it. Once you've acknowledged it, it's now time to let it go. Here is the releasing affirmation you say to yourself. This is only a feeling. It's not attached to me. I can let it go. I will let it go. I have let it go. Thank you, God, for helping me to let it go. How it works. This is only a feeling. This tells your mind that the emotional feeling is not attached to you. It is not attached to me. It's, it, this tells you that your mind, that you are separate from your feelings. I can let it go. This tells your mind that you are getting ready to let it go. I will let it go. This gives your body instructions to take action and to let it go. I have let it go. This tells your mind that you no longer have that emotional feeling. Thank you, God. Giving thanks to God, acknowledge that you have you had spiritual help and letting it go. I know of no better system of releasing your negative feelings and emotion, emotions than letting go of this in this way. I just hope that you will practice it until it becomes part of you. This is a very, very brief lesson on this subject. And if you want any help, then please give me a call. Children's Education TV One, TV One showed a documentary about teaching children how to think like Albert Einstein. The tutors were teaching the school children to say out loud, I am a genius. Neuroscience has recently discovered that some people have known for years that this, sorry, sorry, neuroscience has recently discovered that some people have known this for years. You were not born with a given amount of intelligence. You have as much intelligence as the next person. If you were to repeat to yourself over and over again the words I am a genius, the neuron cells in your brain would grow and you would start thinking like a genius. In a later session we are going to talk about your brain and how it works and we will be talking about the analytical and creative sides of your brain. Up until the age of eight, the analytical side of a child's brain is not fully developed and they think creatively and will believe anything that is told to them. That is why children believe in Father Christmas, because at a young age they don't think logically. Unfortunately, we teach our young children things like, don't do this and don't do that. You can't do this and you can't do that. Hold your tongue. Little boys and girls should be seen and not heard. You silly thing. Don't be a dummy. And so on. Because young children's brains are, are still being developed, this negative information goes directly into their belief tank and they grow up believing all the negative information uh, and they then act accordingly. I hope that the education department in this country does not does start taking notice of the latest in neuroscience research and they do start teaching children how to think positive think talk just like Albert Einstein did. I know that one of my future goals is to write a success manual for children. I certainly wish I, would, I was given a Think Talk success manual for my life when I was a child. 
Readers' questions. When my ex-husband comes to me, the children he treats me... Sorry, this is a reader from, uh, question from a reader. When my ex-husband comes to see the children, he treats me like I do not exist. And when he does speak to me, he's very rude and obnoxious. You are not responsible for your ex-husband's attitude. The only thing you control in your, is your own thoughts and attitude. As long as you keep thinking of your ex-husband as being a rude, obnoxious person, then, th then he, this is the way he will always treat you. What you need to do is keep holding a picture in your mind of him being friendly and polite to you. If you do this, your attitude towards him will change, and he in turn will change in line with your thoughts. You can, uh, you can change you can change people's attitudes, but only if you change your own thoughts first. Remember our two worlds, the inner world of our thoughts and the outer world of our reality. Change your inner world and you, and you change your reality. In the next lesson, I want to cover two important topics in the next lesson, your comfort zone and your beliefs. Both of these are the key to understanding why you are good at some things and not good at others. You will learn how you can break through that, your comfort zone by changing your beliefs. Thank you for listening.